Welcome back. My name is Dave and this is Fuzzy Tutorials. So today I'm going to show you how to trace an outline on a photograph and turn that into stroke around the picture. And we're going to actually make it two different colored strokes. And in the process, you'll learn a couple other little cool things. We're going to be doing this in pictographic for Mac. So let's get started. Okay, so here's an example of what we're going to be creating today. And it's surprisingly easy to do. We're going to start with creating a new document. Okay, and then we're just going to hit Command Zero to zoom out to the whole project file. Okay, now we're just going to go and grab a picture here. Okay. And we're going to create another layer. And then we're going to lock this layer just by going to this little area right here and clicking so that we don't accidentally select it. And we've got to make sure we have our new layer selected here. And then we're going to use the pen tool. And you can select it either off the tool ribbon here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is just the letter P. And, and you can pick any point to start. And just before I start actually making points here, um, this is something I actually discovered fairly recently. When you make a point, before you let go of the mouse, if you drag it out a little bit, you automatically create your bezier handles so that it's a point of curve. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to go in after the fact and use this tool right here and go drag handles off of all of them. So it's just a lot easier to do it right here. So we'll just click and then we'll drag a little bit until the handles appear. And then we're just going to continue doing this and we'll work our way around and it doesn't have to be that precise because we're going to be covering this with a an outline anyway so it just needs to be fairly close so you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this now i'm going to go ahead and finish this up I won't make you suffer through watching all of this. But I will point out that as we're making a few points, you'll notice it's starting to fill in. So if we just go over here and turn off the checkbox for fill. And we can set our stroke to one so we can actually see the line. And then we'll just carry on and I'll fast forward through the rest of making the paths here. And then we just go over to the first point here until you see that little circle appear and the pen tip change and that will complete our path. And now we can either go up here and click on our node selection tool, or we can hit the letter A on the keyboard. And then we can just fine tune any of these 
lines that we want to. And if we want to adjust any of the curvature, of course, you would just click on the node and you see those little handles that pop out. And if you want to move a handle individually, you just hold your option key down and then that handle will move independent of the other handle for that point. But I don't think we really have to make any other adjustments. Everything looks pretty good. So now we're just going to go up here and click on our move tool, which you can also access with the letter V on the keyboard. And now we're going to pop down our uh, layers here, open them up. Okay, so before we actually separate our areas here, we're going to copy this to the clipboard because we're going to need a copy of it here in a minute. Now you can either make the copy of it now and just so we want to uh, paste it in place. So we can either go up to the menu and we can go uh, edit, paste in place, or you can hit the shift command V. So now we'll take this one, your original one, and we will select our background picture. And then we'll go up here and we'll click on divide. Now that gives us some extra shapes that we're not going to need anymore. So we'll take this one, which is the part here surrounding us, and we can delete that. And this is an extra one we don't need. We can actually get rid of all these extra ones except for the picture itself. Okay, now this is where this extra copy of this shape comes in. And this is what we're going to turn into our outline strokes. So we can get rid of our properties inspector. And now we've got our uh, stroke turned on here and we're going to leave it on center uh, the position. Now, if this isn't already open, all you have to do is either click on here or you click on the little hamburger menu and it unpacks this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the desired width of our stroke. And now this is how it covers up any spots that we might have missed or been a little inaccurate on. So actually I'm just going to make that a little bit thinner. And go with 15 on that. Now the nice thing about graphic is we can go down here and we can create another stroke. And we'll take this new stroke that we created and we're going to drag it over top of the first one. And the reason that we do that is if we leave it underneath, then it'll actually create a stroke on top of the other one. And we don't want that. We want it to create one behind. So now so we can see that it's actually getting bigger and behind it, we'll change the color. And we can just pick any color. I'm just going to change my selection tool here. Okay. So we'll just set a nice, actually this outer one is going to be red. So now we'll just expand it until it starts to show up. And now right now it's set to center and you could use it like this if you want, if that's the effect that you're going for. In my case, I'm going to I'll click on the position here and I'm going to change it to outside. And then we'll just drop it back a little bit. And then we're 
going to throw a little drop shadow on there. And of course, we'll we increase our X and our Y to make it a little more visible. And then we'll just soften it a bit. Actually, we're not going to put the drop shadow on here. I forgot about this little... Unless you want a shadow showing up on the inside of the line as well, but that's not the effect we're going for. So we're actually going to get rid of that. And I'm actually going to go, uh, copy another, or paste another copy of our outline. And we're going to take that and we're going to move it underneath the actual photo. And then we're going to go up and give it a solid fill. And we'll get rid of the stroke and we'll add the drop shadow to that. Okay. Now, because it's not accommodating existing strokes worth about 30 points added together, we need to make this a lot bigger. So we can just type in the amount that we want. So we'll make this say 35. And we'll make this one 35. And that's probably a little too much for my taste. So we'll drop it back to 30. And we'll drop this one back to 30. And then we'll soften it to say 20. Looks pretty good to me. And then if we want to put something else behind it, let's just go grab something from my stock footage library. So we can take really anything that we want. Grab this, drag it in. And we'll drop this to the very bottom. Drop this to the very bottom of our layers. And then we need to just resize it. So we're going to zoom out a bit. And I can do that just by holding the command button down and hitting the minus key a few times. And then we'll just Resize this. The next spot. Command zero to zoom up to the project. And we'll just resize it until it's correct width. Now I'm going to show you a little bonus thing here. We're going to take this picture now and we're going to copy it to the clipboard so command C and then I'm going to make it invisible just by clicking that little eyeball there and then we're going to go up and we're going to select the rectangle tool you can also get that by hitting the letter M as in Mary And then we're going to take that shape and move it down to the bottom here. And now we can go up to the edit menu here and we can go paste inside. Now, for some reason, when it does this, it keeps wanting to move it to the very top. So we just have to grab it and pull it back down. And now we can get rid of this. original one and if we go back to our move tool if you wanted to 
selected a little different portion of that picture. We can just select this here and then we can actually now move it. And if you want to move it a little faster with your arrow keys, you hold the shift key down and it nudges it 10 at a time. So when we're happy with that, we can just leave it there. Now, uh, once you've got this created, you, we want to take this other shape and drag it off of that upper layer and just put it in place here. And we're going to turn off the lock. And then we're going to select all the layers here. And then we're going to group them. Oh, actually, we, we don't want that background picture. So we're going to group that. And then we'll just name it here so we can keep track of what's what. So now I can grab this. And if I was to just resize it, uh, by grabbing the corner here, uh, it's going to leave these stroke widths the exact same width, which will look a little funny if we scale it. So if we were to scale it down like this, now those lines are a little too heavy. So what we're going to do is use the actual size tool. And we'll just hit S on the keyboard, or you can select it over here on the ribbon. And then we can just grab any point and we'll hold our shift key down to constrain the size. Oh, we had to do that before we moved it. Hang on. So we'll just hold the shift key down and then we'll resize it. And that keeps the size proportional. And <laughs> for some reason, I didn't, I guess I didn't press it hard enough. Let's try that again. So once you get it to the size you want, then we'll go back to our move tool. And we'll just drag it to where we want it here. And since just by itself is a little bit boring, I'll just add a couple little elements here. So we'll give you a bonus. We'll just go back to our other extra layer and give you a quick little introduction to our gradient tool. So we're going to hold our shift key down to make a perfect circle. And we'll just drag it out here. And then we want our move tool, so we'll just hit V. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke. And we're going to open up fill here, and we're going to change it from color to a radial gradient. And let's just pick a couple of nice colors here. from a nice bright red and we'll click on our other little color well and we'll just select a, a bit of a darker red here okay now if we want to make it look like an actual globe then we can go over here and double click on it and you notice we get these couple of lines here, and this is our tool to change our start and end points for our gradient. Bring this one down here.
Now, if we want to make a kind of a bright shiny spot in one area, we can just actually click right beside the other existing one there. And then we can just drag it over. making adjustments until we get it where we want. And let's make this one a little bit darker. And you notice it's updating it live as we move the slider. So there we go. A pretty convincing looking little globe. Or a sphere, I should say. Now if we wanted to and add an extra dimension to this. We can go over here to Inner Shadow, and then we can select, say, a, a minus five, and a Y, a minus five, and Soften it a bit here. And then we're going to go into our our colors here and we're going to oh sorry wrong one. We're going to go into our inner shadow color. And we're going to make that the bright red. And maybe we'll just brighten it up a little bit more. And that just gives us a little extra dimension, makes it look like there could be either another light source or that the material is slightly translucent. And this software is available not only for Mac, but also for iPad and your phone. I was actually introduced to this software back when it was iDraw, and I got it for my iPad. And it's a, it's a fairly inexpensive software. I think for the iPad version, I believe I paid about $20. Uh, that was a few years ago. And when I bought the... Um, the Mac version, I think I paid about $39 US. And it's a one-time fee, and there's no subscription or anything. So once you own it, you own it, and you get all the upgrades for free. If you find value in this tutorial, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more of our content, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And if you want to see some more uh, resources or other work that I do, you can check out my website at fuzzyd.ca and you can also find our link to our merch store there and I've got some free downloads available and resources to help you with your YouTube channel or video editing if you're using uh, DaVinci Resolve. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Hope to see you back soon. Bye for now.